This is Big Picture Anatomy with a look at how the nephron, the microscopic tubular structure inside the kidney, functions in regulating the salt content, water volume, and eventual concentration of the urine that the body produces. Now, the nephron is composed of three basic parts, what's called the glomerulus, which is where filtration happens. We've then got the proximal convoluted tubule connected by the loop of Henle to the distal convoluted tubule where the processes of secretion of substances into the tubules and absorption out of the tubules happens. And then finally, the collecting duct, which is where the concentration of the urine happens. Let's take a look at each of these a little bit more closely. If we look at how filtration happens, filtration happens in the glomerulus, we have what has to be one of the most startling and perhaps high-paced metabolic processes in the body. Now, what happens in the glomerulus is that we have these truly incredible capillaries called the glomerular capillaries or the glomerulus itself situated in what's called Bowman's capsule which is a collecting piece for fluid that's going to come out of these capillaries. They are fed by what is called the by what is called the afferent arterial. The afferent arterial goes into the glomerulus where you have a dense capillary blood bed where most of the plasma and dissolved substances in the plasma filter out of the blood and into the proximal convoluted tubule. This happens at, I think, what has to be a startling rate through what are called fenestrated capillaries with lots of holes in them, um, through what are the podocyte cells that surround the capillaries, and as we can see, at a glomerular filtration rate of about 125 milliliters per minute. That's how fast in the entire kidney, in the million or so nephrons that are there, fluid is filtering out of the blood. That adds up, if you do the math, to about 90 liters per day passing a fluid passing out of the blood into the tubules of the nephron. In four minutes, the kidney, the, that filtration rate would fill a typical one liter soda bottle or water bottle. All right. Of that 90 liters per day that filters into the tubules of the kidney, only about 1% of it is ever going to make it all the way through to become urine. So quite a bit has to happen in terms of secretion and absorption and then concentration of the urine in the collecting ducts. So let's look at the next step, secretion and absorption. This includes both secretion from the surrounding capillaries and interstitial or intercellular fluid into the tubules of certain substances and what we call absorption out of the tubules of other substances. The absorption can be passive, meaning it's basically osmosis or diffusion, or it can be active where there are proteins in the membranes pumping these materials out. In the proximal convoluted tubule, we see that there is active absorption out of the tubules of amino acids and glucose, eliminating those from the urine, and then there is secretion also active of some hydrogen ions, potassium ions, ammonia, and urea into the tubules from the surrounding fluid. As we move through the proximal con convoluted tubules, we also see active absorption of sodium, and that in turn leads to passive um, absorption of the negative chlorine ions and also water as we create those positive ions or those positive ions are pumped into the interstitial fluid. The role of the loop of Henle is really to create a concentration gradient from this very outer cortex region of the kidney as this dives down into the medullary region of the, of the kidney. And the way it works is as the, constant, as the filtrate moves through here, there is active absorption of sodium and chlorine out of the tubule, especially in this ascending loop of Henle, followed by some passive absorption of more sodium and chlorine. And as the filtrate descends down here, 
initially small amounts, uh, uh, large amounts of water, and then less and less water passively um, move out or absorb out of the tubules, creating a concentration gradient of or saltiness gradient from about 300 osmoles per liter, milliosmoles per liter, even 100 all the way up at the most outer parts of the cortex down to about 1200 or even 1400 down in the core of the kidney. This becomes important in terms of the role of concentration of urine in the collecting duct and that's the main role of the loop of Henle. When we get back to now the distal convoluted tubule we're going to see some repeat action. There's a little more focus in the distal convoluted tubule especially on the movement of hydrogen ions active now secretion into the tubules of hydrogen ion regulating pH in the blood around here in the interstitial fluid along with potassium sodium which then allows for movement of, of sodium out of here. Also active absorption as you can see of sodium chloride and the water that follows it and eventually we get a very dilute again your uh, filtrate coming into the collecting duct after all of these absorptions and secretions happen in the collecting duct then is where we're going to see concentration of the urine. How does this happen? The collecting duct takes the filtrate and brings it into the core of the kidney towards the calyces and eventually the ureter. And the way the collecting duct works is under the influence of ADH, the collecting duct becomes differentially permeable along its walls. If there's an abundance of fluid in the body, we're very well hydrated, then ADH levels drop, and the wall of the collecting becomes very impermeable, and a very dilute, dilute urine passes through here down to the calyces. On the other hand, and that's what we see indicated on this side of the wall of the collecting duct, if we're relatively dehydrated and need to keep a lot of water in the body, then the wall of the collecting duct becomes very permeable so that as the filtrate passes through here into more and more concentrated regions of the kidney, that concentration gradient created by the loop of Henle over here, that water will, will passively osmose or diffuse out of the collecting duct, leaving behind a very concentrated urine that moves down into the calyx and to eventually to the ureter and down to the bladder. So that's how the collecting duct then works to differentially regulate the concentration of the urine that is eventually produced. I know that this whole thing can kind of look at like just a mess of tubules and blood vessels. And there is I think a final kind of feedback mechanism here that might make sense of it all. So let's follow this through. The blood comes through an afferent arteriole into the glomerulus where much of the fluid filters out. Now notice this is unusual instead of having a vein coming off these capillaries it's an efferent arteriole which then carries that blood to two sets of capillaries. One are the capillaries that come off of what's called the vasa recta just meaning straight vessel that surround Henle's loop and also the proximal convoluted tubule and then you can see I've got here a little branch coming off just to see up close going to the distal convoluted tubule. How is this possible? Well you have to imagine this whole thing this whole thing not being so much laid out in a straight line like that, so that's just for convenience, but really with the loop of Henle wrapped around the glomerulus so that we can connect this little arteriole over here to this one feeding into the little capillaries and arterioles that f surround the distal convoluted tubule. So and in addition you have to see right here that there is a very special set of cells on the afferent arteriole called juxtaglomerular cells right before the glomerulus and these actually touch a region over here on the distal convoluted tubule and these cells sense blood pressure and then they in turn get some feedback from these cells here on the distal convoluted tubule called the macula densa which sense the solute concentration in the solute that's in the dis that's coming off of Henle's loop and going into the distal convoluted tubule and so what happens if you go back to the macro picture there's this feedback here from the macula densa cells 
to the juxtaglomerular cells to regulate what the blood pressure is like going into the glomerulus, determining what the filtration rate is right, like based on the solute content coming out here over the other end going into the, into the collecting duct. That's just one small part of the entire way in which ki the kidneys regulate uh, concentration and solute contents, but it gives you an idea of how this entire nephron is put together. Um, so just to recap, the role of the nephron is a microscopic set of tubules. There's about a million of them in your two kidneys that regulate fluid and salt levels in the blood and also the contents and concentration of the urine that is produced. There's three main steps to this. Filtration happens in the glomerulus where most of the, most of the fluid in your blood is constantly filtering out of the glomerulus into the, pro, into the tubules of the kidney at a rate of about 125 milliliters per minute or 90 milliliters per day. There's then a series of secretions and absorptions, secretions into the tubules from the surrounding fluid that's fed by these capillaries and absorption out of the tubules into the fluid and into the capillaries around here in both the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule regulating the content of urea, hydrogen um, ions, potassium ions and also sodium and chlorine ions that are in the filtrate and of course the volume of water and also allowing the loop of Henle to create this concentration gradient from the outer cortex of the kidney down into the core. After regulating that content of the filtrate, we wind up with still a very fairly dilute filtrate coming off the distal convoluted tubule into the distal, into the collecting duct, and this is where the urine is concentrated, depending on how permeable the sides of that duct are. If we're very well hydrated, the duct will become very impermeable, and we pollute a dilute um, filtrate will become the urine going down the calyces to the urine to the ureter. If we're rather dehydrated, the the walls of the collecting duct become porous and most of the water osmosis out of there and we produce a much more concentrated urine going down to the calyces and to the ureter. That is nephron structure and function from big picture anatomy.